Hello, everyone, and welcome to this uh, session, Racing to Equality. Before we start, I just want to say that the plenary sessions have resumed. So listen to our panel first and then head to the plenary session for the rest of the events and panels and interesting talks. Uh, I think I have the best panel. I'm so privileged to be with two stellar ladies, Saudi women. Uh, they are uh, inspirational. Rima Al Jafali, she's a Saudi Arabian professional racing driver, and Masha'i Al Abaydan, she is a professional rally driver. Welcome to FII. And um, I just want to start by saying that only a couple of years ago, Saudi women were not even driving, and now you are racing. We cannot keep up with you guys. And, um, and you're racing on world stage. Rima, I'll start with you. When did you start all of this? Um, is it after women started driving? And how did this whole dream start? First of all, uh, thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, so I started racing in 2018. So the same year women were driving here in Saudi. Um, very happy time for me. Uh, it was uh, without, I mean, very tough coming into something that I was dreaming about for quite a while and it always seemed like an impossible dream. And it wasn't until I watched a certain race and realized, no, it is possible for me to be at the time a 26 year old, come into racing and make something of myself. How come you were ready? Like women weren't driving, but then you were ready to immediately race. It's so hard, it's not easy. I mean, to be honest, in the beginning I wasn't ready. I was probably um, getting in my own way for prob six, six years, five years, it was just a dream and it seemed so far away, unattainable. And then I realized, you know, one step at a time, expose myself to the sport, go out to the track, speak to different people. And then it slowly became a bit more realistic and I understood what it would take to go racing. And um, getting in the track in the car for the first time was the answer for me. Nothing came close. And that's probably what feeds me today and makes me, you know, hungry to keep racing, to be out there. Mashail, uh, in one of your interviews, uh, you said that when you started and you became famous, uh, your teacher called you, you were surprised, and she said she follows rallying, it was her dream. Do you feel that your generation is privileged and that you're making the dreams of previous generations happen? Honestly, I think we are privileged today because we have a passionate uh, crown prince that enables us today to actually achieve our dreams. And as you see today, we have the biggest events in the world happening in the kingdom, Formula E, Dakar, and so on. And it's always about the support. So if you ask me, how did I start my career as a profession? I would say it all started with my dad when I was a kid. He noticed the passion, he gave me the support, he bought me my first quad, and it transformed my life. So taking it from there, and today I'm racing the international biggest rallies, I believe, yes, it's the timing, it's having a strong crown prince, pushing to achieve our dreams, and it's the support, support I got from everyone. Okay, I was like, I haven't been in Riyadh for three years because of COVID, and I was so happy how vibrant it is. And one of the people was saying, yes, women are now driving, that's why there's traffic on the road. So I would just wanna talk about the negative stereotypes. Like you're Saudi women, and you go to the international community, you meet all those, it's a man's world. Like, what do they say? Do they, as a woman first, and a Saudi woman, do they tell you this is not your place, or do they welcome you? Can I be honest with you? With motorsports, is once you put the mask on, you never see gender. You just see drivers competing and pushing for a podium. And it's all about the support again, because as a rally driver, my team is female and men, right? It's all about teamwork. So it's all about the talent you have as a man and woman, right? Is whomever is good will join the team and we're all gonna achieve whatever we're pushing for. Uh, Rima, uh, when I used to go to war zones, uh, there are people who used to tell me, uh, why are you there? Why are they sending you? They should send a man to a war zone for reporters. And probably some people will tell you the same. 
uh, we see men driver. And this is not a, this is a dangerous uh, career, right? You can have accidents. So t tell me, you're a woman in that men's world. How does it feel? I think um, you're right in saying that it is male dominant and I really wish in the future we see more women in this field. Um, but it is true most of the time until today, unfortunately, sometimes I am only the w only woman amongst 100 plus drivers in my race suit. But like Michelle said, when you put your helmet on, you don't know who's in the car, you don't know who you're racing. It's about your ability and I like to put, um, prove it on track. and my experience and, and I guess with time you get more confident in yourself and you have that assurance that you could sense that you have on the track and off track. In the beginning, I chose actually not to listen to any of these noises and, and negativity and believing in what I had to do and how I needed to get to where I want to. And with time, and now here I am three, three four years later and I am racing internationally, um, results to prove and it only came with some belief and support, most importantly. You, you make us all proud. Um, uh, Mashael, uh, I want to talk about how you get ready. You're conquering the desert, and she's conquering the uh, tracks, driving tracks. And it's two different things. It's very tough. How many accidents? <laughs> Is it dangerous? And how do you stay fit? Honestly, honestly, there is a misconception um, when it comes to motorsports because the car, I believe, and I think Prima agrees, is way safer than what you drive on the street because it's all FIA, it's humiliated, and it's pretty safe. So yes, I had a couple of accidents, but those accidents give me the rush to push even more and more, you know? I think that's the, the adventure part of motorsports. Rima, how do you get ready for your races? Do you need to exercise, sleep? How does it work? Tell us more about your world. Yeah, definitely. I mean, to come to the point of accidents, and it's a dangerous sport, um, This, I mean, technology and where we are today is proven time and time again on track after 20-plus accidents in, in learning that in the, you are in a safe environment. Um, so I think that's about the accident side of things. But uh, training-wise, so sometimes I'm in the car for two and a half hours, two hours at a time, driving at the limit, under stress, and in order to, to be at my best and drive and perform the way I want to, it's about endurance, so being able to withstand long hours in very stressful environment, and also strength. So uh, driving a car at high speed obviously takes some strength, but I realized whenever I do focus on building my endurance, and, and sometimes it's being on my bike for three hours, or being in the gym and not enjoying being in the gym, but the reflection on track is amazing. And, and, and my performance proves that, I, that whatever I've done off track makes me faster on track. So I try and do everything I can before I get in the car to give me my best, best, ca best case scenario when I'm in the car. How many accidents so far? Uh, I can't remember, a lot, a lot of accidents. What do you do? Like, do you feel you're scared? How do you handle it? So um, a lot of racing drivers will tell you when you get in an accident, the biggest thought in your head is not yourself, it's the car. And it's, oh, I can't go back out there. Oh, I'm not going to race. Oh, when can I go back out? And that's your first instinct, obviously, is to check you're okay. And then it's about the car. And it teaches you a lot, actually, the racetrack, being in an accident. You're forced to be under these stressful situations. You're forced to deal with something that sometimes is out of your control. Someone can hit you, um, it could be your fault, so you're dealt with a lot of self-talk, and um, I, I think it's made me a stronger person being on track. You, you ladies are quite courageous. Before I wrap, because I have just a few minutes left, um, you guys are pioneers. Like, I was reading about you and checking your Instagrams, I felt so proud. Uh, I've been following Saudi women for some years now, and I was so happy with your accomplishments. I just want to know what we would say for younger generations, for teenage Saudi girls and Arab women, specifically Arab ladies. How do you inspire them to follow their dreams? Mashail. I would say my message is believe in yourself, believe in your others and support everyone. Again, as without support, it won't be possible, right? So it's believe in yourself, believe in others and support everyone for sure. Rima. 
Yeah, I would, I would echo that and add to it that you have to give yourself a chance to know if it's possible. And if I didn't take the step into an unknown, I wouldn't be sitting here today. So sometimes it's scary, sometimes it's intimidating, but the results will give you the answer. If you go, you, if you don't try, you wouldn't know. So um, try different things and, and sometimes it's nice being uncomfortable. So Mashail flew in last night. She's traveling in a few hours. She's going to a racing... Uh, in Portugal, the FIA Championship in Porto Alegre. So. Okay, and Rima also flew in a couple of days ago and traveling soon for another race. Uh, they promised me to take me with them. And I don't know if I quit my career. And I, because you, you, your life seems so much fun. You're my co-pilot in the upcoming Dakar. Oh my God, Start that scares me. I want to say you are inspirational. We feel proud of you for resembling Saudi Arabia first on a world stage and Arab women also on the world stage. Thank you so much. And thank you for FII. And thank you all for listening. And I want to remind you that the plenary session is open. Feel free to attend the rest of the panels and sessions. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much.